Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Vault Warden. Uh, Vault Warden is a, um, a password keeper uh, spun off of the um, Bitwarden password keeper. Uh, but it's programmed in Rust, so it's lighter, lighter weight, so you can run it on a Docker image pretty easily uh, with a low CPU power. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to install it on my QNAP NAS uh, in their container station software and get it configured. All right, so in my Q, QNAP uh, container station here, I'm just going to click on Explorer in the right-hand corner. And we're going to search for Vault Warden. Okay, so the top result is Vault Warden, sir. So we're going to deploy that. And we'll hit I understand. We're going to select the latest version. If you click the down arrow, you'll see other versions, but we just want the latest one. All right, so we're going to give this a name, Vault Warden. Uh, I am going to use port 800 on my host side to connect to port 80 on the container side. And I'll leave this as it is. Uh, go to Advanced Settings. Uh, under the network, I'm just going to give it a network name, Vault Warden or the host name, sorry, Vault Warden from a network. And I'll give us a MAC address. Um, under environment variables, these are all fine. We will need to add a new environment variable though called admin underscore token. So I'll show you how you get the hash for this admin token. So the variable will be called admin underscore token. And I will just so now I've SSH'd into my NAS uh, where I'll be hosting the uh, the container um, and the command to get your Vault Warden uh, admin token hash is here. So it's docker run dash dash rm dash it space vault warden forward slash server forward slash vault warden space hash. So you hit enter this and it's gonna get you to create a password. And then it returns the hash in which you need to copy and paste this. into your config. So I'm just going to take that and paste it here. And next thing we're going to do is check out the storage. So I'm going to create a persistent storage volume by binding my mount to the host path that I've already created. So on my NAS, I have a folder for persistent Docker configs. So we'll container station persistent configs. And I've already created a Vault Warden uh, folder. So I'm gonna hit apply there. And on the container side, this will map to data. So the databases and uh, other config files will be stored here. So that's all we need to do for the setup. We're gonna hit apply and we're going to hit next and then we're going to hit finish so you'll see i've opened up vault warden here on port 800 so it's local but it won't let me access it because it's not https so we're going to use cloudflare to access our vault warden server and uh, securely serve it up to the internet okay so now i'm going to show you uh, how i set up cloudflare to connect to my Vault Warden server that I've uh, got running on my um, on my Docker container. So the first thing I did was in Cloudflare, I went to uh, Zero Trust Networks and Tunnels, and I created this tunnel called Vault Warden. So if I click on this, you can see currently it's down. 
Uh, and this is also my um, domain name that I chose to host uh, Vault Warden. So if I configure this, you'll notice that uh, you give it a tunnel name. Uh, I'm running Linux uh, Docker, so if you click on the Docker option, it gives you this little command here to run on your Docker container. So I'm going to copy that. I just SSH into my server um, where I'm going to paste that Docker command. Uh, so this will set up the uh, Cloudflare uh, tunnel uh, via Docker. Okay, so the uh, tunnel is now initiating. And when we go back to the Cloudflare uh, dashboard, and if you go to networks and tunnels again, you can now see the status is healthy. So we've got a connection from our Vault World server to the Cloudflare server and uh, a healthy tunnel. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is set up access to our tunnel uh, via the zero trust settings in Cloudflare. So what I've done is clicked on access applications and I created this Vault Warden application. Um, when you click on it, you can go to configure and in here you can configure various policies and authentication settings. So the first policy I built, I just named it off. And if you click on it and go to configure, you just give the policy a name. So I just used auth. My action was allow and my session duration was set to 15 minutes. So I'm protecting my Vault Warden server from specific IP addresses, one from work, one from home. That way you have to be on one of these IP addresses in order to access it. If you aren't, you get a forbidden web page served to you. I'm also using my email address as one of the required um, parameters in order to access Vault Warden. So you can have various configurations with this. I just chose to use IP addresses and emails, but you can also use Google authentication and other stuff like that. Here you'll see Google authentication. I have set it up, um, though at a later time I removed this. I just ended up using my IP addresses, but you can configure that. And I use HTTP only, and uh, it serves up HTTPS. And doing some research, same site, Attributes I set to lax uh, that seemed to cure up some issues I was having when trying to get things working properly. So once you hit save application, then you're pretty much ready to go. You can go to your application URL and it'll serve you up a Cloudflare access page. Okay, so when I open my browser and I go to presented with this Cloudflare access page uh, with my Google configuration. So if I click on that, uh, Cloudflare will recognize that I am who I am via Google and it presents me with the sign-in page for Vault Warden. Um, that is everything I need. So I'm running now Vault Warden. I can sign in with my email address that I've set up and my password and uh, I'm good to go. So I just wanted to show everybody, uh, if you go to your IP address, colon, the port, forward slash admin, uh, you'll get this Vault Warden admin page. And uh, this is where you can go in and set up details such as uh, SMTP email settings. As I said, you'll need these if you want to send invitations to your uh, Vault Warden password keeper to your friends or family. There's other settings in here too uh, that you can check out as well. Uh, as an added little bonus, uh, for your Cloudflare connector um, Docker container, if you create uh, this docker-compose YAML file, if you reboot your server, then this will just stay persistent and the container will continue to reconnect. So let me just uh, show you this file here. So this is what I've put in my YAML file for uh, my Cloudflare tunnel. Uh, if you just copy this, so I can put this, except for my token, I'm just gonna leave that out. That'll be unique to you, but I can put this in the comments and uh, you can just create this file. And um, basically when you restart your server, 
uh, you got to install Docker Compose. Uh, I can show you those steps. Uh, to install Docker Compose, uh, so you can run this YAML file, you basically have to run these commands. So uh, there's this command here that will install Docker Compose. There is this command here to change the permissions. Oops. Let me just do that again. Oops. So this command will let you change the uh, permissions of Docker Compose to execute. And that is going to get you done. That'll get Docker Compose installed for you. Um, then you can run docker dash compose up dash d and it will run this yaml file for you so it's already running and it's up to date uh, but that'll just make it persistent so you don't have to come in here and rerun the the connector the cloudflare tunnel connector every single time you restart so you can see here with the docker ps uh, my tunnel is running Anyways, I hope that helped, and uh, again, we'll see you guys again on the next one. Thanks, bye.